I want to take you to a passage of scripture today. Yeah, uh, And perhaps lay the foundation of much of what I'm going to talk about in the days to come. And uh, it's Paul's letter to the Galatians. Reading in verse 11. And of course, all the way into verse 18. All right, so that's Galatians chapter 6, reading from 11 to 18, which is the final section uh, of uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. Okay, so I think yeah. I you will read. Yes, thank you. We all are a Yamasho Tomus Kirtan of Pichajan Minute. Mahambe Dotras Hagan Haraki was to Kumus, Christian Zagman to the Hatchik to Tanari Huchin to Yasas Multime, Ustrajan. Her beatney is a yes, Christian Zagmagar, Sarkas, or not a poor girl. Two good angels, not a youth, be your tinch of Tim. Ochen, Huchin to Pahuchin to the eyes, I didn't hospice. Her shin would tell it to him. In the Chmaria of Shumus Bosom, Borne, Dratin Deer, Amar Tavern, or Shusen by Hostra, Unes Hosh, not a hinch by Zalzum Boachrik, Ochen, be beat. Jesus in our not to be there. Achtuna rabbitni is a Jesus Christ in the house of Tanris and Staham by Hostra. Amen. Amen. Now, there isn't one letter Paul wrote uh, seven letters to seven churches. A pause doesn't seem to doesn't act if it's mara. And then he wrote. Uh, ブレンズ。だからこの先生はこれを書いた。ナイトで見つめて。そう、レビューはタイトルティ。ティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティーティー
because it has to do with the very heart and the soul and the mind of the king. Because the king is writing, is speaking about his kingdom. And when the issues of the kingdom are dealt with, when the matters of the kingdom are presented, when the, when the laws of the kingdom are worked in the human souls, it's going to call for comfort. It's going to call for a response many times that brings uh, disturbance, unpleasantness, and struggles, and even suffering, and death sometimes. So every letter that Paul wrote, he wrote it to the Church of Jesus Christ in the circumstances that are difficult. It's hard. It's the conflict. The tension. The pulling. So the constant, the constant, uh, how is it? The constant conflict. So in this letter, letter to the Galatians is the same. Because the Galatian Christians. Starts with a problem. That Jesus Christ was not enough. The cross of Jesus Christ was not enough. The finished work of Jesus Christ is not enough. And that the lives of some of these believers were starting to trust the old ways. That somehow their salvation can be perfected or be better through circumcision. Because circumcision was a Jewish right. God gave it to Abraham. God gave it to the Jewish people. Circumcision was to identify Jews that they have been separated from others that they belong to God. That they were a race, not like any other race, because they have a covenant relationship with Yahweh. So circumcision was to be the sign to remind the Jews that they are to be owned by God. So throughout the generation, this was passed down. So all Jewish male practice that. And so to the time, of course, when Jesus came and accomplished his work. All of Jesus' apostles were Jewish. They were Jewish men. Paul and James and, and Peter and John were Jewish. And because they were Jewish, they themselves have, won, have gone through circumcision. And as far as Paul is concerned, that's not a problem. Because he said that I'm also a Jew. And I'm circumcised. But then Paul began to take this further. And how is it that he took it further? He says that how about so many of you Jews who were circumcised? Why do you obey God? Why did, you love, why did you love God? 
Why did you follow the commandments of God? Why didn't you obey with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and with all your strength? Because then he said, I was like that too. I was circumcised. I was serving the God of my father. And I thought I knew the commandments of God. I thought I was obeying God. I found out I was wrong. I found I found out there was something wrong with my own life. In fact, he found out what was wrong with his own heart. Because while he was circumcised, while he was following the laws of the Old Testament, he never knew the darkness that was in his heart. He never knew there was a thing called sin in the human nature. Not until Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. The revelation of Jesus Christ turned his entire world inside out and upside down. Everything that he ever knew came to an end and it was destroyed right at the very onset. He found that all of those all of those practices that he practiced, all of those laws that he obeyed, could not save him. Could not deliver him from the power of sin. Could not cleanse his conscience. I say again, could not purify, cleanse his conscience. Because the law was teaching him to do good things. And he did everything good in accordance with the law. But something was wrong with his conscience. Something inside him he knew that his conscience was not free. So he realized in the end that the law of God cannot change or cannot cleanse his conscience. Law cannot save you. He finally knew. He said, I'm circumcised, but circumcision didn't save me. And he found out he can cut himself a thousand times, and yet his heart is still the same. So there were there were people who went into the Galatian church. And started to find from people whether they were circumcised. If they were not circumcised, though they already know Jesus, they start to tell them, go circumcised. Because circumcised will actually tell you that you truly belong to God. So Paul wasn't against circumcision. What Paul was against was when they take circumcision to be the very salvation of the man's life. And Paul said, no. He stood up against them. Now tell me, how can you be like my daddy? How can you boil lamb soup for such a man that comes to preach in the church? 
You won't boil lamb soup for you and cook for you like that. Because you're angry with it. Yeah. Okay, you just have to try and say, I'm not going to do it. You're 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 going to do it. So there were a lot of problems in the church in Galatia. And they were angry with Paul. And Paul was, was against such teaching. So this is when, at the close of the letter here, you read. <laughs> and you know, what is wonderful about Paul is to find him you know, when he's under such attack and such pressure. Uh-huh. Out of nowhere sometimes. <laughs> Something of a, of a precious jewel start to surface. Alright, it's, it's always strange when you read his epistle that when he's under such intense pressure and such conflict, then suddenly, out of nowhere, okay. something precious uh, will come out of his letters. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you wonder that he is in the fight with all these people. How, how is it possible that these Galatians will even know that a, pre- a precious treasure has emerged? <laughs> yes or no? Sometimes you fight so much. When you're in so much of arguments and contests and all the disagreement, how can you ever... You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Is it? And sometimes uh, your husband and wife, you get into an argument, you go for it, and you forgot that your wife did so many other good things. Yeah. <laughs> so suddenly, something showed up. Where was that? It's in verse 15. So let's look at verse 15 again. So I'll read it in English because that was the point of contention. And then at the close, in verse 15, this is what he said. For neither is circumcision anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And he became the apostle. They coined the phrase, the new creation. It was a treasure word. It was a word from heaven. It was a word that has been working in his heart for a long, long time. It was, it was a spiritual reality. That he was that he was living in for a long while now. I'm just wondering sometimes, you know, if Paul were in better conditions. Something that I always say: if Paul was given better circumstances and the church were more mature and the people of God understood the workings, you know, of God in the midst of his people. I always think that. (laughs) Can you imagine how much they would have harvested and drew out from the life of the Apostle Paul? 
аахтай тэр одоо тэнгэрлэг ухаан мэдлэг мэрэгэн байдлыг одоо ургац ураах мэт хүмүүс юм болоо. You know this is the phrase new creation. Ичэшний ийм хэлсэн гэж байгаа хөө. Шинэ бүтээлч ухас юм аа. Galatians the letter to the Galatians was one of the earliest letter he wrote. Paulын бичсэн ер нь ямар учиртай вэ гэхээр He left it as it is and didn't explain it. Aha. Тэр зүгээр хараа шин бүтээл нь чухал гэж хэлээр болчих байгаа байхгүй. Энэ шин бүтээл гэж яг юу юм их хайхгүй байхгүй. Шин бүтээл чухал. He just left a gem, a heavenly gem in the midst of the church and then he closed the letter. Aha. Тэр үеш нэг их сум дотор болж байгаа энэ алсан зөрчилтөө хөвчөндгөө бас болоо энэ дундаас шин бүтээл гэдэг тэр тэнгэрлэг илчлэлтийг харуулсан үгийг хэлээд тэгээд So how, how, what, what are we to do? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's How the church know what he meant when he says it's not circumcision, no uncircumcision, brother and sister, but it's a new creation. Yeah, I don't think it's a new creation. 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 And some of the Galatians will probably say, hey, brother Paul, what's that? Bye bye, see you. So I'm going to ask you, what? Ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-ой-
That these words come about. These are not spiritual, you know, vocabulary to make someone feel spiritual about himself. They are spiritual reality. Because Paul grew and entered into that reality. Now, of course, later, he wrote another letter. Which is even worse than the Galatian. <laughs> In fact, it was the worst of all of the seven letters, seven churches. It was his letter to the to the to the Corinthians. He was broken, heartbroken. He was, he was in grief, he was in sorrow, he was in pain. And he wrote it with such strong words. Hard words. Because there was sin at the church at Corinth. And that was finally the last time Paul ever used the word new creation. He used in Corinthians. Yeah, I know mean, he used it. Yeah, he used it. That's in Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter five. And again, he used it at very pressurized circumstance. <laughs> you know, Paul say these kind of things to people whose heart and their condition would not be able to understand what he was saying. If he was pastoring the church in Ulaanbaatar, you will not give him a pay rise at the end of the year. You will not give him a salary increase. <laughs> <laughs> you would you would pay him a hundred years. Why what Paul, why are you saying these things to us when we don't even understand what you say? We don't understand what you say. And yet, in the midst of the heart and the conditions of these people who did not understand, Paul say these things. So some of you sitting here, don't expect the leadership from this pulpit to always say everything that you understand. You're supposed to hear things you don't understand. But if I don't understand, then why am I still here? Continue to be here. How long? Until you understand. <laughs> Until you understand. What if, if I keep on staying, I don't understand? Then die. <laughs> Understand in the next life. <laughs> God is not obligated to explain everything to you. That's who God is. So, Paul brought forth this whole concept of the new creation. What was he? Now I want to begin here tonight. So this is all is going to take us until we end the session here. Because you must be sitting in your chair now wondering, I want to know what the new creation is. Let me lay some foundations here. Okay. Yeah. Now, all of us in this world, 
in the king with me who need you. If you are human, this is going to happen to us. You're going to live to understand that in life on this earth, there's two births. There's two births. There's one birth that brought brought all of us here. That's called the natural birth. And when you were born, as a natural man and a natural woman, you are born into a natural world. The world that we honor today. And before you were born, this war is already in existence. None of us were born into space, void, nothing. So when you uh, when you have your first birth, you are born into a world that is created. This world is created. As long as you live here on this earth, you're going to spend time on this earth. You will know everything there is to know on this earth. Sorry? You will know everything there is to know on this earth. <laughs> so you, if you enjoy mountains, you climb the mountains. Alright, you enjoy riding on a camel, you ride the camel. You enjoy whatever you want, you, you can you can enjoy yourself. Gain knowledge. Gain knowledge. Learn. Study. The ways of the world is here to make you grow, to make you understand this world. So you, as the years go, supposedly we, we get better. We know more about the world we are living in. And the choice from self and Sam it was that's that's the first birth. So it's 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 by design. God created it. So your first birth will give to you and will bring you into a world that is created. There's a second birth. And this birth is far greater than the first birth. It's called the new birth. It's when God birthed in you the life of Jesus Christ. And the life of Jesus Christ is the eternal life of God. Jesus Christ in the So when it enters into your soul, into your spirit, can you in You're born again. Now, most of you, I suppose, have that knowledge. That happened to me in 1974. When I was barely, when I was barely 17 years old. It's almost 50 years ago now. Oh man, 50 years ago. I had my second birth. You know what I'm, what I'm about to tell you, I wish I knew in 1974. What about the tell now? You know what I found out? When God gave me the second birth, I was born into an uncreated world. You understand that? When you were born first time, you were born into a created world. But when God puts in a man the second birth, 
Where's the uncreated one? It belongs to God. God is the creator. He birthed you to an uncreated one. So what do you think he wants to do? Why do you think? His new birth begins the creation of another one. There you are, don't you? His new birth in me, in you, is going to create an entire new one. Ah, some of us will be nearly in trouble building in this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another word to live in. <laughs> Got the point? Yeah. There you are. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? That's why you were born again. That's why Jesus came to give you a new birth. To another world. Oh, you've been through to the creation of another world. It's called the new creation. It's called the new creation. <laughs> the first creation. Right. All of us, when we were born as a baby, we were born into a creation. Now, this creation. Was created by God. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. Verse 2. Right. Now, so that we all understand this, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. So, so it's going to read Genesis chapter 1 in Mongolian. If you want, you can even read in Russian. <laughs> Not this but they all say the same thing. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. If you have your, your scripture, then do it. So, you have to read the Bible. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. How did the first creation come about? God created it. But out of what? You have to was out of darkness. Chaos, actually, the word. Yeah. Right. It, was, it came out of chaos. And that's how the entire material world, as we now know it, 
But when God created the new creation, Romans chapter 8. This is Paul again. And this is what he said. Romans chapter 8. Uh -huh. I'm trying to put my eyes on the scripture for you. No, sorry. Romans chapter 7. My okay. apology. Romans 7, not 8. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. This is what Paul said about himself. Alright. Twenty-five. Just 24 is enough. Okay. All right. So the word there is wretched man that I am. Now, I know that the translation in Mongolian must be quite the same with English, isn't it? Wretched man. How would that would be in Mongolian? Okay. <laughs> the best you can tell me. Wretched means what in, in Mongolian? How wretched means. Something on the inside, it's all wrong. Wretched means it's all dark, filthy, broken, isn't it? Bad. Yeah. Wretched. Wretched. Wretched that I am. What do, you, what do you think Paul said that? Because Jesus came to bring about the new creation. Like the first creation. God had to create the creation, the first creation. Out of chaos. But the new creation. God has to create. Out of wretchedness. Uh huh. Okay. And when God gives to you the new birth, what happens? There is a word that God is wanting to create. Alright? He's going to create a word inside you. And when he creates that word inside you, he's going to make sure that you start to find out what's in you. You start to find out what lives in you. Got the point now? When you were first born by your parents, it's already a word created. Whether you know it or you don't, you live in it. But when God creates, when God gives the new birth in you, 
He begins the creation. Of another world. And this world is going to evolve. What's inside you? That's why this man wrote a uh, war. Begin to cry. Wretched man that I am. This is Paul. This is much later that Paul has been saved. This is after this. After his salvation. This is after the road to Damascus. The Lord has really met him. The reality of Jesus is really living in him. So, why is he still talking like that? Why, why is he still talking about this negative thing about himself? Because when God begins his new creation in you, when God creates a new world in you, it involves having you to see. It involves what you have to see. Because why? 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 Why is it that you have to see it? Because God wants you to know that you can't do anything about it. You cannot save yourself. That you cannot do anything about your heart. That, that only God can do it. And for God to do it, it will cost him. It will cost even his own life. The life of his own son. It will cost him to even die. It will cost him to even shed his blood. It will cause him to suffer in order to reach that wreck that is in us. That's why the that's why the foundation of our salvation is repentance. And that's why there are many Christians sitting in our churches that have never repented. You're sitting in the church. They raise their hands. They sing their songs. They give their tithes. They serve in the church. But they have never repented. They will join the programs. But they have never repented. And when, when that happens to so many today, there is no participation in the new creation. There is no presence of God remaking of a man's life. There is no spirit of God forming a new word in the soul of a man. And that is what happens to the church in Rwanda. That's what happens to the church in the days in Germany when Adolf Hitler was rising in power and the church supported him. And when he decided to murder the Jews, the church and the pastor stood by his side and say amen to it. The Lutheran Church of Germany. Pastors. Famous scholars. You understand what I'm saying here? I'm, I'm taking you a little bit deeper today. How I wish Paul left the word new creation and have an entire letter dedicated just to explain that. 
When I see Paul, I'm going to tell Paul, you know, you know, I'm losing my voice in Mongolia just to explain. I have struggled and I have battled as a servant, as a pastor, as a as a, as a servant of the Lord for it's ten years. I have asked endless questions which are And today I stand here by the authority that God has sent me here. I declare to you like I did to those pastors in all of them. That's why these crises are now coming upon our time. That's why the COVID hit the world in a most unexpected way. So some of, most of you have seen my daughter-in-law who's a doctor. And she said to me just the other day that we are doctors so we receive first-hand information from WHO. There's already a new virus on the horizon. It's already there now. It's already now on the Cases are appearing in UK. They can't, they can't even find out what it is. It's a virus they can't, they don't even know its, its essence, its nature, its operation. They found out that it's 50 times worse than Corona. Virus. You die instantly when you get it. He said they're fighting now to discover what it is, how to produce a vaccine. So because they have no name, so they call it X. The virus is tension to the virus tension to the virus. This is the one. She said, nobody knows, no scientists, no, 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 no lacks in the world who study it, but what is this all about? So the tension is 50 times worse than COVID. So everything is already a lot now. Hoping that it won't spread, it won't go, it won't run, like the speed of COVID that we had in the last three years. Why, why is it the crisis of the war is intensifying in our times? Because the Lord is wanting to mature His people. Because crisis always tells you what you don't have. That's why crisis comes upon our lives. To speak to us of the things that we don't have. Look at COVID. Look at the entire world. Look at all of the medical expertise and resources of the world. It was paralyzed from it was, it was paralyzed from top to bottom. Look at all of our all of our education. All of our science. I watch, I watch people die in front of me. Can you imagine the first COVID case that died in Malaysia was a pastor? Was a pastor. 
The first case of COVID that caused a death, the first death in Malaysia was a pastor. Oh, really? First case. Yeah, just as well. Just leave the Why has God allowed in our time crisis after crisis? Everyone will tell you we could sustain what is happening today in the world, the economy. Mark was telling you we can't, we can't sustain anymore. It's going to collapse. From banks, we already want nine banks collapsing in America. Banks, financial institutions, they can't hold anymore. By 2050, there will be shortage of food around the nations of the world. And no nation will be spared. No nation. No nation will be spared. Why, why are these things upon our time? You don't have a prophet to tell you these things. We should have sought the kingdom and been seekers of the kingdom. The church should have been mature. So, we should have known his righteousness. We should have sought the eternal righteousness of God. We should have, we should have developed our times and our days in the, in the creation of another world in our lives. Uh, in fact, this word is so real. That this word doesn't affect you. You know how many Christians are living in this world? Look at the way we're living. Smaller than children, five years old, kindergarten, they are exempt. Except examination. Five years old. And the mother having high blood pressure. What? <laughs> their mother's having high blood pressure. Because the, their daughter at five years old is going to How must I walk to the top of the shop to do what's the rest of the city? You know how many Christians sit in our, in our chairs here today? We are drowning in our human problems. We are sucking. We are sucking by the anxiety and the worries of our time. So many of us with unresolved issues in, in our relationship with so many people, our loved ones, our husbands, our wives, our marriages, our families. That's why when he gave you the new birth, that was the reason why he bought he birthed you. Because God was waiting for the creation of another world. It's the creation of another world. It's the, it's the increase of another life. It's the shaping of another manhood, another womanhood. You know, when you were when you were born, like I am, listen, all of us, we all go through the same thing in this in this creation. What is what is one of the first things that your parents told you when you were born in this world? What's the first thing? When you start walking. Of course you don't know when you start walking. What's the first thing? What's the first thing the parents do to you? Walk properly. 
ちょっと待って、どうも、もう、ちょっと待って、みんなみんなみんなみんなみんな、行ってみて、あ、そこして、え、あげて、よ、おき、あげて、おきじゃ、おきしたんで、やこ、やこしら、やこだね、やこ、どこだ、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう、もう
таны дадар бүтээж байгаа тэр би одоо хэрэгтэй ч одоо бид ч улам тамрах so problem so problem бүр одоо зүр зүр их биш чайнгын шоу ипрэсэ байг тэрж байдаг so huge маш том so increase what do you think is going to happen while you're in this world? This whole world that is confined in time and space. You will not have the effect on you. You, you will not become to a victim. And what time and circumstances and what this world would you do? What is the world? What is the world looking for today? Sorry. What is the world looking for? Now that the here you will not join me. They're not looking for anything new in this world anymore. There's no more hope. That's why the crisis of the world and the coming crisis of the world will drive men more and more to be so tired of the first creation. But it is, the, it is the church of Jesus Christ that will present to the world what the new creation of life. Jesus Christ is so and that is, listen, and that is the task of the church in every age. That's why there's an English word that says that the church is the harbinger of the new creation. That means they are the announcer of the new creation. We are the announcer, the proclaimer of the new creation. And because we are not able, so we become victims. Though we are a church living in time and space, we are subjected to the powers that runs the world. Just like the church in that in the end became an institution, an entity in this world and run by the powers of the world. That is to be our destiny. That's why every Sunday morning, this pulpit, this pulpit and every pulpit in the nations of the world is, is the detailed explainer of what the new creation is. It's the constant description of how the new creation works. Pastors and teachers up here are to become the masters and the teachers and the announcer of the workings of the new creation. Because they have already passed through the season of the working of the new world in themselves. I'm going to close with this. Can you imagine what happens when God gives you a completely different mind? Completely, completely different sets of desires. 
Тэгэхээр өөр төрлийн хүсүүдийг хүсдэг болгон Шин зүрх шин сүнсийг таны дотор байгуулсан гэдэг бол It was madness in the early years. I didn't understand what God was doing. Because when God begins to recreate another world in you, and the time is coming soon, when many women are going to walk through this door here, they're going to look for answers, they're going to look, for, look to you uh-huh. to really tell them what's happening to them, to them on the inside. Uh-huh. What are you going to tell them? <laughs> you probably tell to them. You're asking me to tell you. Hey. I was going to ask someone if I wanted to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> What answers of hope can we give to them? So this is an unexplored domain in the Christian faith. And the failure and the failure to go to, the failure not to see this. Is today the reason why the church has got into all kinds of erroneous teaching, all kinds of lopsided emphasis. I say lopsided emphasis. Lopsided means you can't go to a church and yet not find the word. I want to go to this church, they specialize. In worship. Oh, I want to go to this church, they specialize in children's ministry. Okay. So, the younger ones have got to go to the younger ones. We are the ones who are not going to be able to do it. We are the ones who are not going to be able to do it. We are the ones who are not going to be able to do it. We are the ones who are not going to be Sometimes you go to the street and you go to the doctor and check it. You know what? Uh, it's a suit. I don't think I know what to do. I need to write to a letter to see a cardiologist. For example. For example. Mm-hmm. Cardiologist and heart specialist. Mm-hmm. So hospital and heart specialist. Ah, <laughs> So the church has not adopted this kind of way. So you need to say what my church is this, my church is that, my church emphasizes, my church emphasizes that, my church specializes in that. None of which was in the, in the scripture. None of which is in the Testament. Those 
Bitte. How did that come about? Ja, ich habe ihn schon was in der Kirche. Ja, ja, die was in der Kirche. Ich habe ihn schon mal 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 For decades. There's no trace whatsoever of the recreation of another world. I look at my two uh, grandchildren. They're very intelligent, they're very cute, they love me. Every time I carry them in front of them, this is what I tell them. I love you so much. I enjoy you so much. Well, you're a wretched. You need to be saved. You don't understand the word I'm saying. I love everything that is. I love everything that is still loved in me as a little child. If you think if if you think if 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 But you need the recreation of another world in you. One day. Can we all, if we all, if we have learned that today, some of, you, some of you parents, you will not be taking your sons and your daughters to education, their family dances, their hair, their piano class. You will, not be, you will not be guarding your husband like a hawk, you know, the eagle that I see in your country. Fearful, fearful, insecure. Lonely, worried, anxious. If that new creation would have come out, <laughs> your sons and your daughters, they're not as clever than any other kids. But watching something in you coming out of your life. Your voice. Your words, your tears, your heart, your prayer, something from another world is coming out of your life. Would have come to the soul of the children that all the education that Mongolia can ever give them. Yeah, you did know that, did you? Yeah, you thought it's the money, the education, it's the competition, it's the number one. Ah, but you booked those just the ignorant bastard, the monk bastard, the bastard bastard, the monk bastard. I'm talking about Christians today. We live like we're 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 talking about Christians today. And it's in this church of Jesus Christ that the seed of the new creation begins. The hope of the new creation begins. The kingdom of the new creation begins. Which only begins. And that's why, out of that 
whole exasperation in Paul to the Galatians. He was tired. He was exasperated. I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore what you have to say. That's what he said. Let no one disturb me anymore. He said, well, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified unto the word. And the word is crucified unto me. Because he understood this is what the cross came to do. The cross was the birthplace of the new creation. Because he took the cross, he took God's cross. To bring forth the new creation. There was no other way to form the new creation. The cross was God's final instrument. Because that cross will answer the wretchedness that is in all of us. It's the answer to sin that is in all of us. So he said, no, no, enough. Circumcision or uncircumcision, I don't care anymore. But this is what he sees in the end. It's the new creation. Amen. So Lord, we thank you.